So the first book is Behave by Robert Sapowski. Uh, this is a good book. I haven't read the full thing yet. I've read snippets from it, but it's also a very big book, which is why I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, it's basically just like taking the science of hormones and uh, applying it to behavior. I forget the endocrin behavioral endocrinology. I think that's the term. I forget what the term is for the field, but that's what that book is. Uh, a Polar Affair. Uh, this book, when I read, I actually didn't enjoy it. I found it wasn't enough about penguins to run the cover. And I thought it was going to be about penguins because they're on the cover. Uh, but it's actually more just about uh, journeys to the poles, um, different types of animals at the poles, uh, different types of journeymen that have gone. Uh, it wasn't just about penguins, and I was hoping it was about penguins. Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. Uh, I enjoyed this book. A lot of people seem to, even if they read the book, mischaracterize the book. The, the book is not about saying that all human behavior is selfish. He doesn't care about the egoist conception of human behavior. Uh, the book tries to lay out the idea that genes drive everything, basically, and genes, whether uh, we're doing an altruistic behavior or not, are still going to benefit, ultimately. Uh, so it's called The Selfish Gene. The book is really misunderstood. It was a good book though. Why We Sleep by uh, Matthew Walker. So a lot of people have read this. Uh, I actually haven't read it yet, but I know what it's about. It's about like defining sleep, uh, why we should sleep, um, different societal issues as they relate to sleep, uh, and stuff like that. It's just a general overview of sleep. The Extended Phenotype. Um, this book is an extension of his Selfish Gene book. Uh, he actually recommends reading the Selfish Gene book first, then reading this book. Uh, this book basically, if, if the, you could say the first book is about characterizing that behavior as uh, benefiting genes all the time. The second book is about the long reach of the gene and how the gene actually uh, implements behaviors that benefit it. Power, Sex, and Suicide. Um, this is another big book. Uh, I haven't read it yet. Basically, I read one of Nick Lane's books and it was really good, so I decided to get all of Nick Lane's books. And as a result, I have a bunch of these thick books that I need to get to. And this one's about mitochondria. I haven't read it yet, but if it's by Nick Lane, it's probably gonna be good. Okay, Human Longevity, Omega-3 Fatty Acids, Bioenergetics, and Molecular Biology and Evolution. Uh, this book is basically just an, a longevity book and the molecular biology of uh, longevity. It talks about metabolism, um, fatty acids, how they benefit longevity, stuff like this. It's actually a, a little bit of a technical book. The End of Alzheimer's, the first program to prevent and reverse the cognitive decline of dementia. Uh, I haven't read this yet, but I know it goes over the first uh, dementia patients. It talks about some of the, the programs that we actually use to prevent Alzheimer's. It even explains what is the actual biology of Alzheimer's uh, and what you can do as a person right now to prevent yourself from getting Alzheimer's. Gene, uh, An Intimate History. I read this book a long time ago. I liked it. He writes really well. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit more scientific. Like, not that there's no science in here, I should say. I thought it was going to be heavier, more technical. Uh, but it wasn't. And I actually liked it. It talked about social policies um, as it related to genetic sciences. Uh, it talks about some of the early geneticists, the kind of like biographical history of gene through like the scientist kind of type thing um, and even talked about some of the breakthroughs that we need to consider in the future such as genetic engineering the neuron uh, i read this book was in university uh, cell and molecular biology it's basically just a typical neuron in the brain 
the molecular biology of the typical neuron in the brain. It goes over like uh, signal firing, um, ion currents, the types of ion currents there are, um, types of uh, neural communication, so like uh, neurotransmitters or hormones, uh, stuff like this, right? Just basic molecular biology of the neuron. That being said, the book isn't written that well. Deadly Companions. This was uh, Dorothy H. Crawford. These books are good. Oxford Landmark Science books. I have a few of them. Um, this one I enjoyed. It's like an introduction to epidemiology and virology. Um, it explains all the important concepts and even goes into some interesting little facts. Like, for example, that Napoleon lost 80% uh, of his army trying to march onto Russia. Not from weather, but actually from... Uh, a particular virus that I can't think of right now. Um, yeah, just stuff like this. Or like how the potato famine could have been prevented if people understood bacterial infections of potatoes. The, fr the Frontal Lobes and Voluntary Action. So this is not a book about free will. This is a neuroscience book that goes over what he calls voluntary actions, so like if we ask someone to raise their finger, that's voluntary action. Um, if we ask someone to make a plan, uh, that's voluntary action. He talks about this and how the frontal lobes are like the uh, res residents of voluntary action. That's what this book goes over. Uh, this is also a very good series, Oxford Psychology series. The Neurobiology of the Prefrontal Cortex. Um, yeah, so this is going to go over like the evolutionary theories of uh, the frontal cortex. Not so much, there's actually very little. And then like 80% of this book is actually just dedicated to uh, what are the cognitive functions or what are the functions associated with the frontal cortex. Um, basically, how do we choose uh, things based off recent events? Like how do we make plans based off recent events? How do we choose objects based off goals? Uh, things like this. These kinds of mental tasks that we ask people to do and then we measure their brain activity. That's what this book is dedicated to, uh, to be honest. This uh, evolution and the origin of insight, we could ignore that pretty much. The Coming Plague. This was, a, this was a good book. I like this. It took me a while to read. It's quite big, 600 pages, and it's got small font. Uh, a lot of interesting ideas in here. It's a medical journalist who really understands the medicine, and she talks about health policy in certain countries leading to drug resistance, and uh, not just in like the Asian countries, but also in America. It's all over the place, right? Uh, it talks about um, how people responded to pandemics, so like Ebola, uh, influenza, um, Marburg, Marburg, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I believe I am, Marburg, uh, there was an outbreak of that, uh, how we mishandled monkeys and as a result spread unwittingly viruses uh, globally, stuff like this, uh, that's what that book was over, it was a good book. The last book I'm going to talk about is the Atlas of human brain connections. So this book I used in university. If you want to understand how to read neuroscience papers, this is a good book. Um, that and some chemistry, but this is a really good book uh, because it goes over uh, sectional anatomy, descriptive anatomy, um, connectional anatomy, uh, goes over different pathways and different systems inside the brain. It's a very good book that gets to what is the core of anatomy in neuroscience. And I spent a lot of time looking for a book like this. So this is a good book. So those are some of the books from my biology shelf. And with that being said, choose.